Hey guys, I am just in the middle of editing the video that you're now watching and it's already up to around about 55 minutes long. That's obviously a bit too long, it's just annoying when videos are that long because it drags it out and people don't like watching YouTube for that long in a straight run. So what I'm going to do is break it down into I think about 5 different parts, about 10 to 15 minutes long each, and you can see each part as it comes out. Hope you enjoy these videos, cue the intro. Hey guys, how's it going? James here from Car Audio, etc. Another job today. Uh, today it's a bit of a big one. BMW X5. I think it's a 2005 model. Um, yes, 2005, yes. So, these BMW X5s, it's not that they're particularly hard, but they have a lot of labour that goes into them because so what we're doing is we're installing a new stereo, Pioneer AVH X8850 BT. Actually the same one as what I've got in my car, so I know it's a good stereo. And we're also installing a reversing camera for it, obviously, and it's going in this location here. But the thing is, this here, this isn't actually a stereo. This is just a screen and a bunch of buttons. And there's also buttons on the steering wheel, which I'm going to try and tackle later on. So yeah, this is just like a screen and a controller. The guts of everything in these cars is in the boot underneath all of this this all has to come out like the whole lot because there's under here there's an amplifier there's the uh, the tuner like we actually have to run an aerial extension lead all the way back here just to get the aerial um, connection and also he's got an amplifier and a uh, subwoofer here which we're going to connect on to so pretty much what I need to do is start stripping the car and finding all the stuff I need to connect to the stereo that we uh, have ordered isn't actually here yet we're just waiting on the courier it should arrive today along with the reversing camera um, so while we're waiting for that to arrive, I'm going to put some time in and try and strip this car as much as I can Get like the boot completely stripped get the side panels along the left hand side out and get the head unit out Well the screen anyway, so that's what I'm gonna do first I should also say that um today I'm only working on one memory card I didn't bring my other one in because that was one I was having heaps of troubles with it keep getting SD error so I'm only working on one 32 gigabyte SD card today. So I'll probably do a bunch of time lapses to pass the time and cut in and out at sections with progress. So that's how this video is going to be laid out. It's not so much like, you know, hugely technical this job. It's just that it, it takes a long time to do because you have to do a whole lot of extra stuff you wouldn't normally have to do. So yeah. This boot, I've got it mostly gutted, but look how much stuff there is still in here. There's wires for Africa. I've taken out the units that were in here, like taken out his uh, DVD navigation unit, CD changer, the amplifier. This here is the uh, factory screen unit thing. These things on the front, if you're wondering, he's a glazier and he uh, used to have a piece of glass glued onto the front of here so that he could rest his iPad on it just a way of him getting maps on you know on a useful location and I've also started taking out most of this uh, Dentian module which we put in a while ago which gave him you know a USB and Bluetooth interface for his BMW system but since the BMW system is now dead it's obviously you know smart to take it out so what I think I need to do now is start looming up the wires for running I need to loom up 
the ISO wires which I've got. Hold on. So I've got here. <clears throat> got a five meter aerial extension. I've got a five meter uh, 16 pin ISO speaker wire, power wire extension lead. And I've got obviously the fitting kit for the dash. So I need to loom those two up. I need to loom an RCA for the reversing camera. I need to loom up uh, RCAs to go to the amplifier. So there's those two. RCA for the camera, RCAs for the amplifier to power the subwoofer with a remote wire. And I think that's it. I think that's pretty much everything. So where I'm connecting everything, the only things I should really have to connect onto is this plug over here is the one that went to the amplifier which was hidden in behind here. And all my speaker wires should be in there. <coughs> Pardon me. And then for the aerial, I'm not 100, but like 99% sure this one here, this is the, I know this is the tuner, and I'm 99% sure this is the aerial wire that I need to connect to. What I'm not sure about is a power wire for the amplified antenna. Well, if it is amplified, I'm not sure if there's a wire I need to hook to power. That's going to be a tricky one to figure out. But otherwise, everything's pretty much ready, you know, for me to start looming the wires up and laying them in. I'm going to put them up along inside the headlining behind where those handles are. It's just going to be much easier than running along the floor and up and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to start doing now. This unit here, I don't know what that is, but I had to get out of the way so I could get to the amplifier. Not sure what the unit that's under here is. Obviously the battery, heaps of stuff. That thing there is like a pump of some sort. We think it might be to do with the ride height. You saw I had to lift that up out of the way to get to the tuner and the battery. I'm thinking also what I'll do is um, the amplifier, which is on the back of the Soundstream box here. I'm probably gonna move that off the box and uh, into this space here behind the panel. Since you know I've got it all out anyway, I might as well you know do some extra work from him and hide his amplifier. I thought it would look nice. So now I just gotta do some looming and running. There we go, one big loom. We got aerial. Subwoofer RCAs, camera RCA and ISO plugs at one end. I've intentionally got these ones longer because obviously once I add the stereo loom onto this, it's going to become longer and they should end up all relatively the same length. Completely loomed up. And then at this end obviously we've got the female ISO, uh, ISOs, RCAs for the amp, aerial and the camera one I've made it come out of the loom a bit earlier up because obviously that's going to have to go up into the uh, hatch lid at some point. I'm not sure if I've made it too close to the end or too far away but um, it shouldn't be too hard to modify that if I need to. And now we've just got to do the uh, the running part. The hard part's yet to come. The hard part is doing all the soldering and getting everything all wired up right. So far I'm just getting everything in place. <laughs> Okay, so got the plugs coming out the hole. Um, run up the A pillar under these clips here. Hopefully, the A pillar cover still goes back on now. Still, <laughs> that'll be annoying. Uh, I've still got to do the microphone, but other than that, that's everything that needs to go up there. It's all run up and behind the headlining. Had to uh, take the RCA for the camera cable out of the tape a wee bit and then retape it up. Got it coming out of that hole up by the grommet, which I'll run through and into the tailgate. And the rest of it comes down the final uh, pillar here and wound up pretty much the exact right length to connect on here. Obviously, except the RC, the aerial lead, I will put in like a one meter extension, I think, on that and run that down to there. Sweet. Okay, guys, so what I'm doing now is just figuring out what wires in the amplifier loom do what. And um, I was in the process of doing some testing and popping and things like that to figure out what did what. And Grant actually remembered he had a cheat sheet 
from when he did a BMW 3 Series, which where he wrote down all of the wires and what colours they are. And it turns out, on the X5 here, the wires are all exactly the same. Uh, like, same as the 3 Series, so that's fortunate. Got a cheat sheet so I know what wires are what. So now I'm just going to wire the uh, speaker wires all up to the woofer and tweeter wires. Now this is something to take note of, this amplifier was active, so it had separate output channels for the tweeters and the woofers. So what that means I'm going to have to do is put some capacitors on in line with each tweeter, because uh, you can't be putting full range through the tweeters because you'll blow them. So I'm going to wire a capacitor onto each tweeter, onto um, one of the wires of each tweeter, and then put them in parallel with the woofer wires, and connect them up to the ISO lead. I'm going to solder them, so I'll check back in you with, with you once I've done that, because it's probably going to take me a while. See you soon. So that's it for this video. There are four more coming out with the rest of the job on them, showing you how I go through and get it all done. Um, if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure to hit the button and hit the little bell so that you know uh, when I bring out a new video. If you're following this project and you want to see when uh, new videos for it come out, click the bell so you're notified. And uh, just as a little teaser, here's some photos of it when it's all finished up. Cheers, guys.